What is up guys, MiHoYo has just released this post on some new 1.2 content, so I just wanted to make this video to go over some of the old information discussed here, as well as some of the new information discussed as well. Alright, to start off with, we have the time and date for the actual 1.2 update. It will be on December 23rd, 6 a.m. GMT plus 8, which is the server time for the Asian servers. For the NA server, it will be at 5 p.m. GMT minus 5, as well as for the EU servers, it will be 11 p.m. GMT plus 1. Convert that to your own time zone using a time converter if you need to. The servers will be going under maintenance and will be down during that time for 5 hours so make sure that you have done your dailies, burned your resident or whatever you need to do. I do believe European servers will be down all the way till reset so make sure for European players you guys get that done as well as please account for daylight savings if you guys do have daylight savings. The update methods will be the same as usual, so if you're not familiar on how to update your game, make sure you go to this post and read up on that. You should be able to update the game during server maintenance, so make sure you check back to see if you can actually update your game, because it may not be immediate, it may be an hour into maintenance or so. And PC may be able to pre-download the update starting on the 21st, if I remember correctly, from the older MiHoYo post, so make sure you check out for that as well. It says here in this previous MiHoYo post, testing of the pre-installation function is coming first to PC users with the version 1.2 update. Pre-installation function available starting December 21st, 11 a.m. UTC plus 8 before updating 1.2. I'm not too sure if that means you can update 1.2 or not, but we'll see. Regardless, no matter what platform you're playing on, try to update the game before the version 1.2 servers go live because when the game first went live for 1.0 and also 1.1, if you did not pre-download the game, you were bottlenecked severely to a very slow download speed. So don't be one of the people that have to wait hours to update 1.2. MiHoYo will be giving their standard compensation Primo gems for the servers being down 60 Primo gems per hour with 5 hours expected. If it ends earlier, they'll still give out the full 300. If it takes longer, they'll give 60 more Primo gems for every hour it takes. You have to be Adventure Rank 5 before December 23rd, 6 a.m. GMT plus 8, aka when the servers go down for maintenance. And you do have to redeem them before December 26th, 11 a.m. GMT plus 8 to get these 300 Primo gems. Now for the information of 1.2, what we'll be getting immediately after the servers go live. We'll be getting the Dragon Spine area, which you guys all know about, the big mountainous snowy area. We're getting the sheer cold mechanic in the Dragon Spine area, as you guys know about as well. We'll be getting the Frost Bearing Tree, which is going to be that petrified tree with the red tips, with the crimson agates, which will be a pseudo shrine that we talked about previously in other videos. You will be able to level up the Frost Bearing Tree just like a shrine to get ARXP, a Quaint Fate, Intertwined Fate, a Wind Glider, Blueprints, Gadget Blueprints, etc. Check out the older videos to go look more on that. The domain for the Dragon Spine area will be the singular domain at the top of the summit, which will have the Blizzard Strayer, the Cryo Set, and Heart of Death uh, Hydro Set, as well as some other sets in there, which will be under the four star genre. For the characters and banners of 1.2, the official Genshin Impact Twitter, Paimon, did post the first banners to be released, where Albedo's banner will have Bennett, Sucrose, and Fischl, and the weapon banner will have these weapons seen here. The battle passes also revealed. I did make a YouTube video on it. If you do want to check it out, I'll put a card at the top right of the screen or you can find it on my channel. Ganyu will not be available until mid-January. There will be a new 5-star weapon on the weapon banner, the Summit Shaper, as well as the Skyward Atlas Catalyst as the other raid-up weapon. The Summit Shaper is the Geo Sword. Similar to Memory Dust, Unforge, and Vortex Vanquisher. As we all know, you will be able to obtain the Festering Desire Sword, completing the Chalk Prince and Dragon event, as well as fully refine it if you complete the whole event. It says here you can complete certain quests to obtain the Dragon Spine Claymore and the Dragon Spine Polearm and their forging methods. I do believe this is going to be a whole weapon for free and not just a blueprint like you would be getting from leveling up the Frost Bearing Tree for the Catalyst Blueprint because it was kind of hinted at it at the 1.2 English livestream. Next we'll be talking about the events where it says here version 1.2 events no longer require original resin. Same here where it says original resin is not required to enter this event. Hopefully this really does mean that we do not need to use resin at all to clear out the event shop. The Chalk Prince and the Dragon event will be live after version 1.2 update and will go all the way until January 5th, 4am your server time. 
After version 1.2 update goes live, there will be a comeback mechanic where you'll be able to get a 4-star prototype, Rancor, Sword, Primo Gems, Fragile Resin, and other rewards. To be eligible for the Stellar Reunion comeback mechanic, you do have to have been Adventure Rank 10 or above, not logged in for 14 consecutive days, and it has to have been over 45 days since the last time you did a comeback mechanic. I'm not going to go over the comeback event in detail because it's not going to be relevant to most players. Just know that you'll be getting Primo Gems, Fragile Resin, Hero's Wit, Mystic Enhancement, or 4-star prototype, Rancor, Sword for free, as well the opportunity to get double drops three times per day from ley lines and domains. And in case this needs to be said, please do not avoid logging in for 14 days just so you can take part in the comeback mechanic. It's not going to be worth it. You're going to get more just from logging in consecutively every day, doing your dailies and whatever else your daily routine entails. We're not really going to go over this quest portion. Just know that Albedo's story quest will be available once 1.2 goes live. Ganyu's story quest will be available when Ganyu goes live. They'll have new quests in the Dragon Spine area. You'll be able to finish the off fresh meat quest to get the recipe for goulash, which is a food that you can consume to decrease the rate of sheer cold. There'll be one quest that's not in the Dragon Spine area, as well as new daily quests. We're going to really quickly go over the new monsters and resources available in Dragon Spine. Keep in mind there will still be old monsters and resources available in Dragon Spine as well. First off, there's going to be the Ice Samatro, which is going to be that shaman that usually puts down that circular aura field. There's going to be an Ice Shield Hilly Trail Guard, which is going to just be a small Hilly Trail with an Ice Shield. There's going to be a Cryo Hilly Trail Grenadier, which is going to be those Hilly Trails that throw those bombs. There's going to be an Ice Shield Wall Mid Trail, which is going to be a big old Mid Trail, which has a big old Ice Shield. There's going to be a Frost Arm Lava Trail, which is going to be very similar to the stone version, but he's going to be kind of like the Yeti that you saw in the live stream. There's going to be a Fatui Cryo Sinsen Mage, similar to the Electro Sinsen Mage we currently have. And there's going to be the big Ruin Grader, which you guys saw in the live stream, which is a large Ruin Guard, which is going to be a little bit harder to kill. There are going to be snowboards and snow foxes, which are going to drop that chilled meat that you're going to need for the warming bottle. There's going to be cryo crystal flies for just regular crystal cores. There's going to be the new recipes for a couple different foods. A new mining node for star silver, which is going to be a material for the craftable four star dragon spine weapons. And lastly, some more achievements and name cards. Now for some interesting changes to Abyss. These changes will only affect floors 9 through 12. On floor 9, there will be the sheer cold mechanic and there will be a heating element on the field where enemies will try to attack it to stop it. Once it becomes stopped, the heating element will restart on its own. Floor 10 will also have the sheer cold mechanic, but there will be a warming sealy that will be on the field that will move around to warm you up. Floor 11 will have the engulfing storm, which will continuously drain your elemental energy or your burst skill until the electro debuff is removed. All party members will also deal increased cryo damage. And lastly, for floor 12, all party members will deal increased geo damage. I recommend all players do floors 9 through 11 before 1.2 unless they want to deal with some of these annoying mechanics. If you guys need help clearing the abyss or making a team for the abyss, feel free to join the discord. We have multiple channels for abyss related content or follow me on twitch and ask me there. We're just going to go over the more important system changes really quickly. You're going to be able to private chat with your friends, change the nicknames for your friends, you're going to have a selfie feature available, you're going to be able to have trackable map pins where the game will tell you how to navigate to that pin. You'll be able to repeat a domain without having to leave the domain and re-enter it. You'll get one acquaint fate for every character that reaches Ascension 1, 3, and 5. So you'll be able to get three acquaint fate in total for each of your characters. If your account really doesn't need anything more to be able to complete the content of the game, I kind of suggest that you hold on to these acquaint fate until they make changes to Standard Banner. Whether they end up raiding up characters or making the pool a lot bigger with 5-star characters. But if you're only looking to play this game for a few months, go ahead and use all these summons as soon as you get them. They're adding an autoplay feature for text dialogue, they're adding a vibration setting for controllers, and they're adding another BP weekly mission so that you don't have to do all the weekly missions or dailies. Some quality of life changes is that when you do domains and ley lines, the items will directly go into your inventory rather than drop on the floor. And for co-op mode, you can disband the party without having to kick each of your party members immediately and go back into single player mode. They're changing the text of a bunch of characters that convert attacks into elemental attacks, but keep in mind that the effects are not changing. This is just a textual change. Ningguang will be receiving a buff where she'll be able to see Star Silver and Dragon Spine with her passive and be able to see ores on the minimap. For exploration progress, some of these locations will get a percentage increase towards completion. If you already have 100% in these areas, you will not be affected. And for the last change is actually quite a big one. They will be adjusting the daily rotation rewards for Domain of Forgery and Domain of Mastery. Domain of Forgery being Weapon Ascension Domains and Domain of Mastery being Talent Book Domains. From Monday to Saturday, the rewards will not be changing, but on Sunday, as most of you guys know it is a random drop as of right now but after 1.2 update on Sundays you'll be able to enter these domains and select exactly which material you want to be farmable so if you guys are looking to upgrade some material and miss out on the day Sunday will definitely be a good day to be able to farm whatever character you guys need for weapon ascension or talent books 
I just want to go over this again once more real quick. The servers will be going down December 23rd, 6 a.m. GMT plus 8. You will have to convert that to your own time and the servers will be going down for 5 hours. Make sure that you update the game during the server maintenance. It may not be at the start of the server maintenance, but it will be available during the server maintenance. If you do not do it during the server maintenance or during pre-download, you may be stuck with really slow download speeds and not be able to play the game for a few hours after servers go live. And in the past, servers have used usually gone up live before the five hour time period so make sure you check on discords to go and see when the servers are actually live so you can play immediately when the game is available that's going to be all for this video thank you guys for watching please do consider leaving a like comment down below what you're most excited for in the first part of 1.2 subscribe for more genshin related content join our discord to be part of our genshin impact community follow me on twitch to have some live discussions about the game and follow me on my socials such as twitter and instagram for live quick updates on the game Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.